Skulking Permit by Robert Sheckley. So far, Tom Fisher has succeeded with only half of his job as town criminal. After the village had settled down for the night, Tom went out and gathered three bags of loot. He took Mrs. Mar Carpenter's best saw, a bronze plaque from the mayor's house, and Jed Farmer's sickle. Next, he nabbed Roger Waterman's spade, Mrs. Weaver's water jug, and a little wooden horse that some child had forgotten. Last came Ron Stone's hammer and chisel, a reed basket from Alice Cook's house, and Jeff Hem's rake. Now it was time to murder. He could live with the thieving, but murder? What would people think after they saw one of their friends sprawl on the ground, eyes staring open, limbs stiff, mouth twisted, no air going in or out of his nostrils, no beat to his heart? How could he live with them? How could he live with himself afterward? And yet he had to kill. Everybody in the village had a job, and that was his. For the life of him, he couldn't choose whom to murder. He had lived with these people all his life, and even the idea of killing one of them made him feel sick. While he was pondering, the Imperial Earthship shuttle had landed in a nearby field, and the inspector, his political advisor, and four guards emerged from the ship. Tom suddenly had a great idea. Find out in episode three how Tom resolved the problem of New Delaware's first murder. Episode three. The mayor edged forward, followed by Billy Painter. A door in the ship opened and four men marched out. They held shining metallic instruments that Tom knew were weapons. After them came a large red-faced man dressed in black, wearing four bright medals. He was followed by a little man with a wrinkled face, also dressed in black. Four more uniformed men followed him. Welcome to New Delaware. Thank you, General. The big man shook the mayor's hand firmly. I am Inspector Delumain. This is Mr. Grant, my political advisor. Grant nodded to the mayor, ignoring her outstretched hand. He was looking at the villagers with an expression of mild disgust. We will survey the village. The inspector glanced at Grant out of the corner of his eye. Grant nodded. The uniformed guards closed around them. Tom followed at a safe distance, skulking in true criminal fashion. In the village, he hid behind a house to watch the inspection. The mayor pointed out with pardonable pride, the jail, the post office, the church, and the little red schoolhouse. The inspector seemed bewildered. Mr. Grant smiled unpleasantly and rubbed his jaw. As I thought, a waste of time, fuel, and a battle cruiser. This place has nothing of value. I'm not so sure. The inspector turned to the mayor. But what did you build them for, General? Why, to be earthly. We're doing our best, as you can see. Mr. Grant whispered something in the inspector's ear. Tell me. The inspector asked the mayor. How many young men are there in the village? I beg your pardon? Young men between the ages of 15 and 60. You see, General, Imperial Mother Earth is engaged in a war. The colonists on Deng 4 and some other colonies have turned against their birthright. They are revolting against the absolute authority of Mother Earth. I'm sorry to hear that. We need men for the space fleet. Good, healthy fighting men. Our reserves are depleted. 
we wish to give all loyal Earth colonists a chance to fight for Imperial Mother Earth. We are sure you won't refuse. Oh no, certainly not. I'm sure our young man will be glad. I mean, they don't know much about it, but they're all bright boys. They can learn, I guess. You see? The inspector said to Mr. Grant. Sixty, seventy, perhaps a hundred recruits. Not such a waste after all. Mr. Grant still looked dubious. The inspector and his advisor went to the mayor's house for refreshment. Four soldiers accompanied them. The other four walked around the village, helping themselves to anything they found. Tom hid in the woods nearby to think things over. In the early evening, Mrs. Ed Beer came furtively out of the village. She was a gaunt, grayish blonde, middle-aged woman, but she moved quite rapidly in spite of her case of housemaid's knee. She had a basket with her, covered with a red checkered napkin. Here's your dinner, she said as soon as she found Tom. Why, thanks. Tom was taken by surprise. You didn't have to do that. I certainly did. Our tavern is your place of low repute, isn't it? We're responsible for your well-being, and the mayor sent you a message. Tom looked up, his mouth full of food. What is it? She said to hurry up with the murder. She's been stalling the inspector and that nasty little Grant man, but they're going to ask her. She's sure of it. Tom nodded. When are you going to do it? Mrs. Beer cocked her head to one side. I, I mustn't tell you. Of course you must. I'm a criminal's accomplice. Mrs. Beer leaned closer. Mm, that's true. Well, I'm going to do it tonight, after dark. Tell Billy Painter I'll leave all the fingerprints I can and any other clues I can think of. All right, Tom. Good luck. Tom waited for dark, meanwhile watching the village. He noticed that most of the soldiers had been drinking. They swaggered around as though the villagers didn't exist. One of them fired his weapon into the air, frightening all the small, furry grass eaters for miles around. The inspector and Mr. Grant were still in the mayor's house. Night came. Tom slipped into the village and stationed himself in an alley between two houses. He drew his knife and waited. Someone was approaching. He tried to remember his criminal methods, but nothing came. He knew he would just have to do the murder as best he could and fast. The person came up her figure indistinct in the darkness. Why, hello, Tom. It was the mayor. She looked at the knife. What are you doing? You said there had to be a murder, so. I didn't mean me. The mayor backed away. It can't be me. Why not? Well, for one thing, somebody has to talk to the inspector. He's waiting for me. Someone has to show him. Billy Painter can do that. Tom grasped the mare by the front of her shirt, raised the knife and aimed for the throat. Nothing personal, of course. Wait, if there's nothing personal, then you have no motive. Tom lowered the knife, but kept his grasp on the mare's shirt. I guess I can think of one. Uh, I'm, I've been pretty sore about you appointing me criminal. It was the mayor who appointed you, wasn't it? Well, sure. The mayor pulled Tom out of the shadows into the bright starlight. Look. Tom gaped. The mayor was dressed in long, sharply creased pants and a tunic resplendent with medals. On each shoulder was a double row of ten stars. 
her hat was thickly crusted with gold braid in the shape of comets. You see, Tom, I'm not the mayor anymore. I'm a general. Well, what's that got to do with it? You're the same person, aren't you? Not officially. You missed the ceremony this afternoon. The inspector said that since I was officially a general, I had to wear a general's uniform. It was a very friendly ceremony. All the earthmen were grinning and winking at me and each other. Raising the knife again, Tom held it as he would, as he would to gut a fish. Congratulations. But you were the mayor when you appointed me criminal, so my motive still holds. But you wouldn't be killing the mayor, you'd be killing a general. And that's not murder. It isn't? Well, what is it then? Why, killing a general is mutiny. Oh. Tom put down the knife. He released the mayor. Sorry. Quite all right. Natural error. I've read up on it and you haven't. Of course, no need to. I'd, bet, I'd better get back. The inspector wants a list of the men he can draft. Are you sure this murder is necessary? Yes, absolutely. The mayor hurried away. Just not me. Tom put the knife back in his belt. Not me, not me. Everyone would feel that way. Yet somebody had to be murdered. Who? He couldn't kill himself. That would be suicide, which wouldn't count. He began to shiver, trying not to think of the glimpse he'd had of the reality of murder. The job had to be done. Someone else was coming. The person came near. Tom hunched down, his muscles tightening for the leap. It was Mrs. Miller returning home with a bag of vegetables. Tom told himself that it didn't matter whether it was Mrs. Miller or anybody else. But he couldn't help remembering those conversations with his mother. They left him without a motive for killing Mrs. Miller. She passed by without seeing him. He waited for half an hour. Another purse person walked through the dark alley between the houses. Tom recognized him as Max Weaver. Tom had always liked him, but he didn't, but it, that didn't mean there couldn't be a motive. All he could come up with, though, was that Max had a wife and five children who loved him and would miss him. Tom didn't want Billy Painter to tell him that that was no motive. He drew deeper into the shadow and let Max go safely by. The three carpenter boys came along. Tom had painfully been through that already. He let them pass. Then Roger Waterman approached. He had no real motive for killing Roger, but he had never been especially friendly with him because Roger had no children and his wife wasn't fond of him. Would that be enough for Billy Painter to work on? He knew it wouldn't be. And the same was true of all the villagers. He had grown up with these people, shared food and work and fun and grief with them. How could he possibly have a motive for killing any of them? But he had to commit a murder. His skulking permit required it. He couldn't let the village down, but neither could he kill the people he had known all his life. Wait, he told himself in sudden excitement. He could kill the inspector. Motive? Why, it would be an even more heinous crime than murdering the mayor, except that the mayor was a general now, of course, and that would only be mutiny. But even if the mayor were still mayor, the inspector would be a far more important victim. Tom would be killing for glory, 
for fame, for notoriety. And the murder would show Earth how earthly the colony really was. They would say, crime is so bad on New Delaware that it's hardly safe to land there. A criminal actually killed our inspector on the very first day. Worst criminal we've come across in all space. It would be the most spectacular crime he could commit, Tom realized, just the sort of thing a master criminal would do. Feeling proud of himself for the first time in a long while, Tom hurried out of the alley and over to the mayor's house. He could hear conversation going on inside. A sufficiently passive population. Sheep-like, in fact. Makes it rather boring, for the soldiers especially. Well, what do you expect from backward agrarians? At least we're getting some recruits out of it. Oh, on your feet, guards. We are going back to the ship. Guards? Tom had forgotten about them. He looked doubtful at his knife. Even if he sprang at the inspector, the guards would probably stop him before the murder could be committed. They must have been trained for just that sort of thing. But if he had one of their own weapons, he heard the shuffling of feet inside. Tom hurried back into the village. Near the market, he saw a soldier sitting on a doorstep singing drunkenly to himself. Two empty bottles lay at his feet and his weapon was slung sloppily over his shoulder. Tom crept up, drew his blackjack and took aim. The soldier must have glimpsed his shadow. He leaped to his feet, ducking the stroke of the blackjack. In the same motion, he jabbed with his slung rifle, catching Tom in the ribs tore the rifle from his shoulder and aimed. Tom closed his eyes and lashed out with both feet. He caught the soldier on the knee, knocking him over. Before he could get up, Tom swung the blackjack. Tom felt the soldier's pulse, no sense killing the wrong man, and found it satisfactory. He took the weapon, checked to make sure he knew which button to push, and hastened after the inspector. Halfway to the ship, he caught up with them. The inspector and Grant were walking ahead, the soldiers straggling behind. Tom moved into the underbrush. He trotted silently along until he was opposite Grant and the inspector. He took aim and his finger tightened on the trigger. He didn't want to kill Grant, though. He was supposed to commit only one murder. He ran on past the inspector's party and came out on the road in front of them. His weapon was poised as the party reached him. What's this? Stand still. The rest of you drop your weapons and move away. The soldiers moved like men in shock. One by one, they dropped their weapons and retreated to the underbrush. Grant held his ground. What are you doing, boy? I'm the town criminal. I'm going to kill the inspector. Please move out of the way. Grant stared at him. Criminal? So that's what the mayor was prattling about. I know we haven't had any murder in 200 years, but... I'm changing that right now. Move out of the way. Grant leaped out of the line of fire. The inspector stood alone, swaying slightly. Tom took aim, trying to think about the spectacular nature of his crime and its social value. But he saw the inspector on the ground, eyes glaring open, limbs stiff, mouth twisted, no air going in or out of the nostrils, no beat to the heart. He tried to force his finger to close on the trigger. 
His mind could talk all it wished about the desirability of crime. His hand knew better. I can't. He threw down the gun and sprinted into the underbrush. The inspector wanted to send a search party out for Tom and hang him on the spot. Mr. Grant didn't agree. New Delaware was all forest. 10,000 men couldn't have caught a fugitive in the forest if he didn't want to be caught. The mayor had several villagers came out to find out about the commotion. The soldiers formed a hollow square around the inspector and Mr. Grant. They stood with weapons ready, their faces set and serious. The mayor explained everything. The village's uncivilized lack of crime, the job that Tom had been given, how ashamed they were that he had been unable to handle it. Why did you give the assignment to that particular man? Well, I figured if anyone could kill, Tom could. He's a fisher, you know. Pretty gory work. Then the rest of you would be equally unable to kill? We wouldn't even get as far as Tom did. Mr. Grant and the inspector looked at each other, then at the soldiers. The soldiers were staring at the villagers with wonder and respect. They started to whisper among themselves. Attention! The inspector turned to Grant and said in a low voice, We'd better get away from here. Men in our armies who can't kill. The morale. Mr. Grant shuddered. The possibility of infection. One man in a key position endangering a ship, perhaps a fleet, because he can't fire a weapon. It isn't worth the risk. They ordered the soldiers back to the ship. The soldiers seemed to march more slowly than usual, and they looked back at the village. They whispered together, even though the inspector was bellowing orders. The small ship took off in a flurry of jets. Soon it was swallowed in the large ship, and then the large ship was gone. The edge of the enormous watery red sun was just above the horizon. You can come out now. Tom emerged from the underbrush, where he had been hiding, watching everything. I bungled it. Don't feel bad about it. It was an impossible job. I'm afraid it was. They walked back to the village. I thought that just possibly you could swing it, but you can't be blamed. There's not another man in the village who could have done the job even as well. What do we do with these buildings? Billy Painter motioned at the jail, the post office, the church, and the little red schoolhouse. The mayor thought deeply for a moment. I know. We'll build a playground for the kids. Swings and slides and sandboxes and things. Another playground? Sure, why not? There was no reason, of course, why not? I won't be needing this anymore, I guess. Tom handed the skulking permit to the mayor. No, I guess not. They watched her sorrowfully as she tore it up. Well, we did our best. It just wasn't good enough. I had the chance and then I let you all down. Billy Painter put a comforting hand on his shoulder. It's not your fault, Tom. It's not the fault of any of us. It's just what comes of not being civilized for 200 years. Look how long it took Earth to get civilized thousands of years, and we were trying to do it in two weeks. Well, we'll just have to go back to being uncivilized. Tom yawned. 
waved, and went home to catch up on lost sleep. Before entering, he glanced at the sky. Thick, swollen clouds had gathered overhead, and every one of them had a black lining. The fall rains were almost here. Soon he could start fishing again. Now, why couldn't he have thought of the inspector as a fish? He was too tired to examine that as a motive. In any case, it was too late. Earth was gone from them and civilization had fled for no one knew how many centuries more. He slept very badly. The end. This comes.